In this MATLAB session, I'll show you how to use Mesh Grid to do lines and line fills. Let's go ahead and get started. I cheated and I already start, opened up command window, started a program. I'm calling it demo underscore lines and fills. And I've initialized MATLAB. So the first thing to do is to define our grid. Let's make the physical width 10. I seem to keep choosing that. I guess I like that. Physical height 10. We'll make it 100 points wide, and we will calculate the points tall by calculating it from the above parameters. And this will attempt to make the cells as square as possible. Next step is to calculate the mesh grid. So step one here is the grid resolution. So this is the, the width and the height of a single cell on the grid. So the width of a single cell is the physical width of the entire grid divided by the number of points. So then the height of a single cell is the physical height of the entire grid divided by the number of points. Now we'll create our axis vectors that define the center position of each point on the grid. And XA or X axis will be the center position working horizontally along the X axis. And so for center position, we start with 0 0.5. We go all the way up to big NX minus 0 0.5. And we multiply by the width of the cell or the grid resolution. I will copy and paste that line and just change my X's to Y's. I'm going to go ahead and run this to make sure that there's no errors. OK, it ran OK. And then finally, we will create the mesh grid. Now notice I've reversed the X and Y's here compared to what MATLAB would tell you to do. That's because we're working with arrays and not matrices. Okay, so let's go ahead and visualize those just to make sure that they're correct. So we will visualize the mesh grid. Now I wanna make a figure window that has four subplots, two by two, and in the top two, will display the mesh grid, and in the bottom two, we'll display the geometries that we create from that mesh grid. So we'll call the subplot command. We want it two subplots tall, two subplots wide, and right now we'll be going to the first subplot. And by the way, if those are all single digits, I can delete those commas, and MATLAB lets you do something like that. So in practice, this is the notation I use. Um, if you like the commas, you, know, you can keep the commas in there without any problems. Okay, well, you know what? Just for uh, kicks and giggles, we'll delete the commas. So let's first look at X, image S C, X A Y A, X dot apostrophe. And remember, the dot apostrophe is doing a transpose because MATLAB is going to try to draw a matrix, but actually X is an array. We want to display it as an array. Axis equal tight color bar, and we'll also give it a title so we'll remember what we're looking at. This is X. We'll go ahead and run that to make sure we haven't made any errors or typos. Okay, and we're looking at X, and we're looking at our number of values increasing left to right. We will copy and paste that, and we're going now to subplot number two, and we're plotting Y, and now we'll see our entire mesh grid, both X and Y. Okay, with that out of the way, it's time to actually make some things. Let's first do a line fill. Line fill. So if we imagine an equation for a line, so y equals mx plus b, right? And so we can define the, the slope m and the intercept b. So we have some kind of line that passes right through the middle of our grid. And I'll make up some numbers here. I don't know. How about a slope of 0.5? and a y-intercept of, let's say, 3. So what we can do is we can create an object where we're going to fill in the entire side of the grid, one side or the other, simply by changing this equals to a greater than or less than. And depending which one I use, we fill in one side of the line or the other. So let's see how this works. So b will be y less than m times x plus b. And aesthetically, we can put some parentheses around these things. Maybe that looks good. Maybe I want to do one more set of parentheses. Uh, not necessary, but maybe that makes it look good. Okay, let's go ahead and visualize B. 
So I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste my visualization code so I don't have to redo that. And now we're not visualizing the mesh grid, we're visualizing our objects. So I'm going to go to the third subplot. I will image this array B and I'll give it a title. Let's call this line fill. Rather than call it B, actually say what it is. So we should see some lines or the middle of our grid and we're going to fill in one side of that. And in this case, we filled in the upper side with ones and the lower side with zeros. Now, if we want to swap that, we simply make that a greater than. And if we run it, now what we'll see is we're filling in ones below the line and zero above the line. And of course, by changing M and B, we can change all the things about this line. For example, we could make our slope negative 0.5 and now we see our line is here. And since we set a, uh, an intercept of uh, three, we can actually see that here, intercept of three. And if we wanted to see this a little more, I might change that intercept to like seven. If I was creating a plot for homework or an example, I might want it to go a little bit through the center, a little bit more than it was before. So that's a line fill. And just by controlling M and V, slope and intercept, we can control where that is. Okay, that was easy. We're going to do one now that's a little bit more difficult. And what we would like to do is create a thick line. We want to be able to control the thickness and we want to control how that line is going through. And we could control it through M and B. Um, let's do this a little bit differently now, just to demonstrate a different technique. Thick line. Let's do this by defining a start point and an end point. And maybe we shouldn't really call it start and end point because the line will be of infinite length. It will just be a line passing through those two points. So we'll somehow have an X1 and a Y1, an X2 and a Y2, and we'll define a width of the line. So let's go ahead and just make up some numbers. Uh, the first point, let's make that zero. And then the Y value, maybe eight. Now we'll make X2 go to the other side of the grid and we'll make Y2 something like three. So we'll have a nice diagonal line and we'll make the width, yeah, how about 0 0.7? And I like to line up my equal signs. Okay, I'm going to run this, make sure I haven't made any typos and it looks like I haven't. Okay, we're good to go. Now, this technique I'm going to show you is maybe I'm overcomplicating what we're doing here. But the technique I'm going to show you is actually very powerful for doing other things. The first thing I'm going to do is calculate a distance function. And what we're going to get is a 2D grid, and the value at every point will be the distance from that line. And it's going to be a signed difference, and I'll show you what that is. Let's go ahead and type this in. Uh, it's in the notes, so I won't bother explaining it. Uh, I'll just go ahead and, and type in the equation. Y2 minus Y1 times big X, the mesh grid X, minus X2 minus X1 times Y, the mesh grid Y, plus X2 times Y1 minus X1 times Y2. And that's not the distance yet. That's just some kind of strange intermediate parameter. But you know, if we want to see what that is, let's go ahead and take a look at it. We want to visualize this anyway. So we're going to go to the fourth subplot. In this case, we want to look at D. So we'll go ahead and run it and we'll see what we have so far. Interesting, almost there, but not quite. We really need to scale it now. So D is D dot divided by, we're doing a point by point division and we have a big square root here. And after doing this, it'll be properly squared. So it's going to be y2 minus y1 squared plus x2 minus x1 squared. Now the distance function, it will look basically the same, but it will be scaled properly. So our line is passing through the value of zero. So we're looking for a greenish kind of blue. So our line is somewhere right around here. 
and the value on the grid is the distance to the line. Now, what I meant previously about a signed difference, and this is very useful, we have positive values on one side and negative values on the other. So this gives you another way to select one side of a line or the other. That's a signed distance. An unsigned distance would be positive numbers leading away from that line in both directions. But that would not allow you to distinguish whether you're above or below the line. So here's an unsigned difference. Let's put an absolute value around this D and look at it. And so, okay, now we can see exactly where the line was. I think I just pointed out slightly incorrectly, but notice we have, we're starting at zero, distance of zero if you're right on the line, but it's always leading to positive no matter which way you're going. So you really can't tell whether you're above or below the line. So I like the signed difference, distance. Uh, so that's where we are. Very useful for many other things. Okay, now once we have that, we're basically there. Now we can create our line, and we'll say B is anywhere the absolute value of this distance function. So we're throwing out the fact that it was a signed distance anywhere that is less than the width of our line. So let's go ahead and run it, and we should see a nice line. Oh, whoops, we're still displaying D. We need to look at our B, and we will call this thick line. Okay, here we go. Much, much better. So we see a thick line, and we can control its thickness. Maybe it's uh, 1.5 thick. Thicker line, and you know we can we can play around with these numbers six, so it'll be a slightly flatter looking line. So you get the idea. We can now have a line in any direction, any thickness, and that is also immensely useful. So that is it for this video. I hope this is helpful to you.